Harrington Squires with Led Zeppelin, and you're listening to Musicians on the Record. Hit it. Bring it on. Hi, welcome to Musicians on the Record. I'm David Ward. You've heard the music, now hear their story. And I'm so happy to have on the show the drummer for the all-female tribute band Les Zeppelin. Lisa Harrington Squires is on the show today. Welcome, Lisa. Hey, how are you, Dave? I'm so great. So great to have you on the show. Thanks for doing this. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. My pleasure. Let's talk about Les Zeppelin uh, for a moment because it's an amazing band. If people don't know about this, please tell them about the band and how it even came about. Well, Les Zeppelin is uh, it's all girls, all Zeppelin. So there's uh, four females, of course. Uh, our guitar player, Steph Paines, she put the band together um, with... See, she put it together around 2012, and uh, no, two, not 2012, I'm sorry, 2004. <laughs> sorry, it's been 12 years, 12 or 13 years. Amazing. And um, I joined the band in 2009, okay. and uh, so I've been in the band for about eight years, and um, it's done nothing but get better and better and better and better every year. Uh, I play with some of the best musicians, and I'm just going to leave the word female out of it because, okay. you know, you throw the word female around a lot and it kind of pigeonholes you or, you know, like, oh, they're good for females. No, these girls are just good. They're musicians. Right. Okay, we're all, we all mastered our craft, and that's what it is. I think that's what sets us apart from... Um, uh, you know, the, the people come as skeptics to see us play, oh, a bunch of girls playing Zeppelin. Yeah. And then when they come in and they see us live and they're like, they rub their eyes and they're like, wow, you know, like I, 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 I can't tell you how many times I've had the, the people come up to me and say, man, if I didn't know any better. I wouldn't have thought that I was seeing Led Zeppelin live. I mean, in Poland, we played in Poland once and, uh, I had grown men like crying coming up to me, you know, like because they never got to see Zeppelin live, and sure. they literally were weeping, mm. you know. And and, it, and it's because we take our time to, you know, um, just we put our heart and soul in the music. It's yeah. not just learning the music. Yeah. Like I told Jimmy Page, Jimmy Page came out to see us play in London, mm. and he was like, you know, you guys play the music. Like you wrote it, you know, you really get it. And I said, well, you know, I could learn your music and know your music all day long. Yeah. And I could feel your music all day long, but it's giving the music back to the people. That's the hardest part. Yeah. He's like, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> that's how it is. I think that's what really sets us apart from a lot of tribute acts is the fact that we don't consider ourselves a tribute act. It's more like an experience than anything. That's great. What was that like for you guys to meet Jimmy Page? And have you ever met any of the other remaining members? Um, I've only met Jimmy. And uh, our guitar player, Steph, she's met, um, you know, all the living members, of course. She's met, uh, you know, uh, Robert and JPJ and and Jimmy. Yeah. and JPJ is pretty funny. John Paul Jones, he's he's uh he's actually made the comment how he'd love to play with us. You know, we're like, well, come on with it. Right, exactly. Um, Join the band. <laughs> um, when Jimmy Page walked in the backstage door in London, it it was surrealistic. You know what I mean? It was very like, uh, wow. You know, and, and when he came up and gave me a hug and and told me that. 
that he just, you know, he had never, that, that, that we that we get it, you know, that it just made like, at the time I'd been, I'd been doing it for five years and I was like, you know, you just made the last five years of my life worth it, you know, like he, yeah. he approved and it, this was from the guy who, yeah. Who put it all together? You know, you got. I, we had the stamp of approval. If you know what I mean. If you look at our, you look at, you look at our Facebook page, and you see that picture of him standing in between us. He just looks like a proud papa. You know what I mean? Yes. This big grin on his face. And, yeah. You know, he he was very sweet, and he said some really nice things about us, mm. and and. Uh, and, and some some magazines and every time he talks about us, he has nothing but, but good things to say. Very very nice guy. Yeah, that's wonderful. So I mean, this band Lisa has taken you sounds like all over the world. Obviously, the U.S. You're talking about Poland, London. Where else has Led Zeppelin been? Oh, we've been uh, you know France, Germany, Singapore, Poland, uh, Japan, um, of course the U.K., Ireland. Um, uh, you know, all over the United States, including Alaska. Amazing. Um, I do believe, uh, you know, Canada. Yeah. Um, we're try trying to get down into South America. We think that that would be a lot of fun. Sure. And we'd like to get over to Australia. Yes. I think that would be a lot of fun, too. Um, uh, India. We went to India once. That was interesting. Wow. Uh, so, but, you know, yeah, we... We've gone to pretty crazy places, yeah. yeah. What's that Everybody like? Everybody loves Zeppelin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everybody loves Zeppelin. It's pretty crazy. That's right. It's worldwide, right? Yeah. It is. Yeah. So what's that like for you, uh, touring like that, being able to play, but also just taking care of yourself, traveling that much? Um, I love traveling. Yeah. If, if I could tour... You know, if I could tour a couple of weeks or out of every month, or if I could tour every other month, mm. I'd be a happy camper. I, I love being on the road and playing for people all over the place. Um, I just love it, and it doesn't wear me out. That's the thing. I get my. I think I get more power. I, I, mm. I, my, I, I, get, I get just energized. And I get, it, it's more exercise for me. It keeps me going. Yes. Uh, be out there playing for the people and um i wish we did it more let's put it that way uh but we do we, we travel we travel quite a bit so in the united states uh things that are going on that are crazy in the world right now we have to be kind of careful where we go sure these days you know france and england right now are a little yeah I hate to say it, but are a little, a little scary. Sure, no question. And so, Sad. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, so we have to kind of, you know, be be careful where we go these days. Sure. And um, you know, but I, I love touring. Yeah. When is more, I would be very happy. Yeah. Does Led Zeppelin have any uh, touring plans for this summer? Um, yeah, we're actually gonna go back down south, which we haven't been down south in uh, in, in, in about <laughs> since '09, since I've been in the band. We've uh, we're gonna be in uh, I think Kansas City and in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, um, I do believe we're trying to make our way over to Texas, and um, uh, there's a few more dates. I, I'm not sure, but I know we're we're hit the south. I know that we've got some southern dates uh, dates booked, and they're still being booked for like August and September, stuff like that. The, the month of July we have off, but this this Friday night actually uh, is our last our last show of of uh, uh, until until August. Uh, we're playing at the Highline Ballroom in New York City this okay. Friday night. Great. So, Excellent. Yeah. So, you know, on this show, Lisa, we try to get the musician's story. Can we start a little bit about, you know, your story with drumming and music? When did you fall in love with music? When did I fall in love with music? Oh, my goodness. I was young. I was a single digit. Um, my father was into big band music, mm. and uh, he used to play me. I just remember my dad, you know, breaking out his big band records on putting on the hi-fi, you know, um, stuff like, 
Buddy Rich Orchestra and Tommy Dorsey and Glenn Miller, mm. uh, Benny Goodman. Oh, love Benny Goodman. Um, you know, put on all the good stuff. Um, and um, I used to make him play me drum boogie all the time and and Spike Jones and yeah. you, you name it. Dad would put it on and, and, we, and I'd dance around the house. I loved it. And then... I had a uh, I had a babysitter who was a little bit older than I was. Well, she was older than me. She was uh, probably in her early teens when I was six or seven. She turned me on to Cream, mm -hmm. sure. and she turned me on to Black Sabbath. Okay, yeah. and I became a huge Cream fan, mm. and I really loved Ginger Baker's tribal drums. I really thought that they they really turned me on that that. that just that really heavy thumpity thumpity that he played. I, you know, I, there was something about it that drew me in. And then when um, I remember going to the beauty shop with my mother, and there was a lady that sold 45s and, and 8 tracks. Uh -huh. And I got money off my mom, and I went over and I was looking at them, you know, and I found uh, Cream's Greatest Hits, or not, not the Greatest Hits, uh, I don't know. It was, one, it was a Cream. You know, one of the Cream uh, eight tracks, yeah. and I was like, oh, "Wow, that's that band!" So I bought it, and I must have been seven or eight, I, seven or so. I I know it was before I was eight, yeah. and I got that, and and I played it till it fell apart. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, Black Sabbath though was the band that I truly truly fell in love with when mm -hmm. she turned me on to black sabbath yeah. had to have it yeah my, my parents were a lot older than you know my mother was in her 40s when she had me so mm -hmm. they were quite a bit older than i you know they were already several generations ahead so they didn't really pay attention to the music that i was into they just thought it was a bunch of garbage sure and um when i was nine that same girl asked my folks that she could take me to a concert hmm. and she ended up taking me to see um black sabbath mm -hmm. with van halen opening up oh my goodness wow and it was uh, yeah it was the never say die tour wow and i that was my first time to ever see rock and roll live band whatever and i'm going to tell you i it changed my life yeah I walked out of there. I had been taking guitar lessons oh. for a couple of years. Okay. And uh, I walked out of there just like, you know, <laughs> I, I wanted to be a drummer so bad. Okay. And um, my guitar teacher actually uh, told me that I should talk to my parents and try and be a, you know, try and get them to get me a, to be a drummer. So right. yeah. I a... thank my guitar teacher every day now. All right. Know. <laughs> <laughs> so the, then the well, drums... <laughs> Yeah, so then the drums came into your life. Uh, do you remember your first kit? Yes, I do. I, my parents made me work for it because yeah. they had just bought me an electric guitar. Mm. And um, and I was like, well, I want a drum set. You know, I said, well, first off, I said, oh, I need her sticks and a practice pad. And my mom was like, oh, okay. And then every time she bought me a new cymbal or a new head or a new that stuff, it was like, oh, practice pad and cymbals, uh, practice pad and sticks, huh, you know? <laughs> right. So, um, but no, my folks made me work for the for the drum set. It was, we're not just going to buy you something and it sit in the corners. Yeah. So I worked as hard as I could. Mm -hmm. I was um, eight going on nine, mm -hmm. and I mowed lawns, washed dogs, whatever I had to do, washed cars. Yeah. You name it. Yeah. And I saved up. My parents told me they'd match me dollar for dollar. That's great. And I saved up as much as I could for my age, you know. Yeah, yeah. And they, we bought a little $300 Sears, you know, little yeah. blue three-piece drum kit, you know. Yeah. And I played that thing till it fell apart. And it didn't have a drum throne. I remember sitting in a chair. <laughs> And it didn't have a hi hat. It had a little symbol, like a little aluminum symbol that came right. out of the, the bass drum. Yeah. I still have that symbol, as a matter of fact. <clears throat> it's great. And, and um, yeah, it, I beat that thing to death. I yeah. put my record player behind me with my headphones yes. on, yes. put my Kiss records yeah. and my Sabbath records and my <laughs> just all my, my fun rock and roll on, and I just 
I played and played and played and played until, you know, I, I don't, my parents never told me to stop, you know, they, you know, bless them. They, they, they're like, well, if she's interested in it, let her do it. You right. know, it's a positive thing. They right. Want, they don't ask me to please stop, you know, right. and where was they it? Put up with it? Was this in New York, Lisa? Where was this? Oh, I grew up in Houston, Texas. Houston. Okay. Got it. Excellent. Yeah. So you caught the rock and roll bug pretty early then it sounds like and it has stayed with you yeah yes i did dave very very early i caught the rock and roll bug yeah. and 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 i also really loved the big band music i i learned out my dad would always like you know bet you can't swing and he would always you know try and get me to do a buddy rich kind of right. solo or a swing i mean i i there's no way i could ever play like buddy rich because i'm a self-taught drummer mm -hmm. but I still I can swing till the cows come home. I'll tell you that I don't, I have an inner meter that's built in, mm. and I mean you kind of have to if you if you're going to be a decent drummer you have to have that inner meter. Right. And like Ginger Baker says, you you have to know how to swing. If you can't swing, you know then you just really have no place behind the kit. You know you just have to learn how to. Yeah. It's built in. You know that that swing. You know. Sure. Yeah, um, yeah, so you had both. Ginger Baker's in the past. Yeah, yeah, right. So both the rock influences with like Ginger Baker and Bill Ward of Sabbath, but also, you know, some of the greatest uh, other jazz drummers with Buddy Rich, probably Gene Krupa. Gene Krupa, yeah. uh, 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 Chauncey, uh, Max Roach, yeah, I mean, all those cats, man, sure. you name it. They're all fantastic drummers, yeah. So and Bill Ward, if you listen to Bill Ward's playing, I mean, Bill Ward from Sabbath, if you listen to the way he plays, he, he swings behind. He's a, he's a big band player behind playing playing hard rock. I mean, the way he plays, you know, that's, you know, fairies wear boots. Uh, a lot of those songs is just, you know, a lot. It's just swing drumming, but with a heavy edge, you know. It's, yeah, very you true. Tell he was too. That's you know? right, exactly. And very true of a lot of those players like Bill Ward, John Bonham, Ian Pace as well. Very much jazz influenced, those guys, right? Very much. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, they, they all grew up during the, you know, they were all baby boomers. You know, they, they, they came up in the 40s and 50s, you know, so that, that music was prevalent in their lives as well. Yes. So, you know. That's right. And when they were learning how to play with that traditional breath, you know, their teachers were probably, you know, trying to get them to do, they probably had jazz bands or right. something there. Right. You know? Yeah, exactly. And when you take that incorporated into your music, you know, yes. so. Yeah. So you, you said you're mostly self-taught then behind the drums. Uh, were, did you ever take lessons or were there any important teachers or just you've picked up pieces along the way from these great artists? I just learned by listening and watching. I, I did take band in school for two years. I started, uh, I had already been playing for several years. Um, and I grew up in the era of, you know, of course, girls don't play drums. Yeah. And it was very hard to get past that stigma. Mm -hmm. And every time I wanted to join band, like in sixth grade, you know, oh, the drum section's full. Here, play clarinet. I'm like, yeah. I'm a drummer, you know. I don't, I don't play clarinet. Yeah. And the drum section's full. Play like clarinet. I was like, no. And then seventh grade, same thing. Oh, drum section's full. So by the time they would let me in the drum section, it was already eighth grade. So they're putting me in the beginner band, you know. Yeah. By then, all of the eighth graders are in, you know, like, you know, they've already learned all their rudiments and whatnot, and they're, they're about to go into high school marching band, sure. which is what they did. They, they put me in beginner band for eighth grade, and then ninth grade threw me right into to marching band. Wow. So I was kind of confused. I didn't know all my rudiments, and I did, I was really behind on the reading of the music, and, and I struggled. I, I really did. I struggled pretty hard, but I tried to keep up. I... I you know, and to this day, I still can kind of read what's, mm -hmm. you know, the real basic stuff. Yeah. I do have a practice pad. I sit there and do paradiddles and yeah. and blamadiddles and yeah. and three stroke rolls and six stroke rolls or whatever. But most ninety eight percent of my drumming is all 
self-taught, and it might be wrong, you know, in, in, by, by most people's definition of playing, the way that I, I, I might play, but, you know, whatever, I play it right. That's right. Right for you, it works, and you're making a living uh, playing music. That's pretty fantastic. And I'm also... I also have students, you know, that, wow. that, you know, I teach them, so. That's fantastic. How, if somebody, do you do like this, uh, Lisa, on Skype as well as in person? Uh, I don't give lessons on Skype. No, I haven't figured that out yet. That okay. would be nice. Yeah. But, no, I have, I have a few students I teach just, you know, here in the, in the, in the city. You That's know. fantastic. That's great. Yeah. So yeah. Can, can we talk all uh, can we talk also about Les Zeppelin and how did you first get the gig? Sure. Um, <laughs> I was living in Houston, Texas, you know, um, delivering pizzas like most drummers do. And um, uh, in 2007, I had gotten a phone call from a friend of mine who said, hey, there's this great band coming to town. Uh, they're here tonight. Mm. And uh, I would really like you to go see them. Mm -hmm. They're playing at the Warehouse Live, and I've got two tickets for you at the door. Just, you know, just come see them. And I'm like, well, who are they? Oh, they're, they're a band called Les Zeppelin. And I was like, Les Zeppelin? And I'm like, yeah, it's all girls playing Zeppelin. And I hate to say I hate to say this, but I was a skeptic. You know what so, I mean? I, so. I was like, oh, oh, I gotta go see this. You know, right, right. Some girls playing Zeppelin. I really got it. Yeah. I mean, because you just Zeppelin is one of those bands. You you really just don't expect anybody, let alone. And I hate. Oh, it sounds so terrible. Even guys, you know, you, yeah. you don't expect them to play it well. Right. But then girls, you know, I don't know. I was in that mindset. I shouldn't have been. I, I kicked myself for being like that. But my daughter was a senior in high school at the time, and I said, let's go see this band, you know. And I went, and I was blown away. I thought, this was the old lineup, the lineup before I was in the band. They had uh, Helen Destroy and Sarah McClellan and Lisa Br uh, Brigantino. Mm -hmm and Steph, the guitar player, mm. Steph Payne's our guitar player, mm. and uh, which had been the lineup for like three or four years prior to us. And I saw them play, and I was like, wow, these girls really tear it up, you know, I was like, impressed. Yes. And um, apparently their, their manager at the time lived in Houston, or was from Houston, Okay. and he... Um, they were they were scared that their drummer was going to quit Helen. Okay. And a friend of mine who was dating the manager and overheard them saying, "Well, I don't know what we're going to do if Helen quits. We don't know any females that play like Bonham." Mm -hmm. Well, my friend goes, oh, "I know a girl who plays like Bonham, you know." So she brought him out to see me play that Thursday at my regular Thursday gig, and um, which I had this smoking band called the Rehabilitines, mm -hmm. and. Uh, he came out, saw me play. We exchanged emails, blah, blah, blah. Well, about a year, I didn't hear anything about it, nothing back. And a year later, I was driving down the road, you know, driving down the freeway, uh, delivering pizzas or whatever. My phone rings. It's a New York number. And I picked it up, and and it was Steph Payne, my guitar player, on the other line saying, hey, is this Lisa Squire, Harrington Squires? I said, yeah. And she says, hey, it's Steph Payne from Led Zeppelin. And I was Hold on, let me pull over. You know, yeah. so I pulled off the freeway and got pulled over to Walmart parking lot, and there we sat and spoke for you know about forty-five minutes about music, and uh, it ended with, "Hey, do you want to send me a press kit?" And um, and we're, I'm looking for a drummer, and I I, I just kind of threw in the gauntlet, saying, you know, I I could send you a press kit, but you're really not going to know if you want to play with me unless. You play with me. Sure, yeah. So she goes, well, you know, I'll pick up that gauntlet. You want to come out to New York? Can you be here this weekend? I said, well, no, but <laughs> I could be there, you know, like uh, my weekend after next or whatever it yeah. was, you know. And I was there within the next few weeks, and I tried out for the band, and she hired me. Wow, amazing. And the rest of the history, yeah. Yeah. Were you part of the... Uh, album as well, Les Zeppelin, Lisa. 
I'm on the Led Zeppelin one record. Yeah. I'm not on the. They had a, a record out prior. Okay. To Led Zeppelin one. There's one where we remade Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin's very first record. Yeah. The one that has uh, the uh, looks like their first record, but you see a shadow of a woman. You know which one I'm talking about? Yeah, the one with the Zeppelin on it. Yeah. 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 That's the one I'm on. Okay, great. So can we talk about that? Les Zeppelin one, what was your experience like going into the studio and recording all of that? Oh, that was a lot of fun, you know, because we we used uh we we really concentrated on recreating their very first record and recreating it like I mean, perfect, mm -hmm. down to the same instruments, like guitars, amplifiers, drums, you name it. I mean, our bass player used uh, <laughs> used John Entwistle's old jazz bass, wow. you know, wow. really cool. He used Supro amps. Uh, I mean, uh, our, our uh, producer had Jimmy on the phone asking me, so on what song did, uh, you know, uh, what app did you use on communication breakdown? Right. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, our producer was a friend of his. My, our, our, the producer that we used was uh, a guy that had been with the pretty thing, and he was on uh, had been on on a swan song. Sure. So sure. We had a relationship with uh, Jimmy. Cool. So um, I, I use a really beautiful kit, very similar to actually almost the same kit as mine, just mm -hmm. it, it was an actual vintage kit. Mine's a reissue. Okay. And it had a 24-inch kit kick rather than a 26. Okay. But um, basically the same drum set that I used. Wow. Um, but we used the same microphones, Amazing. the same miking techniques. Wow. I mean, like, uh, the drum set alone only had one, two, three. I think we had, like, Four, maybe five microphones total. Amazing. And that's including with the overheads. Yeah. And uh, I think, you know, a kick and one one over by the floor toms, one that picked up the snare and the hi hat. You know what I mean? We, we, it was a room sound more than a, yes. than a, than a contact sound, sure. you know? Yes. It really, really picked up the ambience of the drums. That's great. And uh, that. We recorded it just like them, and then and uh, and had it mastered by George Marino before he passed away, and it just turned out to be a really great album. I mean, you can you can put that album on, and the all to me the only difference is it's got a female singer. Can we also talk about your love of John Bonham as well? Obviously, being in a, a Les Zeppelin tribute band, whatever you would call it, the experience of Led Zeppelin. Um, tell me about your love of Bonham and his playing. Wow. Uh, I curse his name quite a bit, John Bonham. <laughs> <laughs> Bondo was a... Uh, I stepped into some really huge shoes. Uh, yeah, John Bonham, what an amazing guy, right? Uh, everything from funk to... To, and to swing, to, to just hard rock, to, I mean, the guy was a monster. I mean, right. I'm still to this day, I listen to, to him, and, and I try and figure out, what the hell is he right. doing? Right. I mean, right. his foot yeah. and his hands, yeah. it, they're just, and sometimes I give up. I, I just go, you know what? I'm just going to do it the best I can. I'm going to do it like Lisa. That's it's right. going to sound kind of like Bonzo, but it's not going to be perfect. Right. And I and I and I wait for those one that one day when that 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 critic, you know, in the audience, that 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 John Bonham like stickler, you know, the guy that goes, you know, oh, you're not doing it just right, and you know, comes up to me and says, well, you know, yeah, you were good, but you know. That part during blah 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 where he goes whatever right. you know and, and I'm just gonna look at him and punch him in the nose you know <laughs> <laughs> you know what dude you can do it you can do it do it better you know I'm right. at it you know exactly but um, it's just I think that 
I think the best thing is I, I take Bondo and I, I play him the best that I can. Yeah. I put I put myself I've always played like John Bonham in a way, not because I'm trying to even before I was in Led Zeppelin, I grew up playing the blues. I grew up playing kind of uh, rock and roll and rock blues. I grew up down in Texas yeah. playing with the blues. I made my living being a blues drummer. Yeah. And the thing is, is everybody called me Bonzo. Mm -hmm. I had lots of friends that would go, hey, hey Bonzo, what's up? He slapped me on the back, you know? It was just because of the fact that I had that when you when you lay back and you, and you and you and you're not right on top of the beat, you know, um, sort of behind the beat. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're a little bit behind. There's a word for it. I just can't remember what it is right now. It'll come to me. But uh, I always had that, and it wasn't because I was trying to emulate Bonham. It was just that was my feel. Mm. That's the way I I just felt the music. And so when it was time to actually learn Bonham, it was hard, but he had a style that was very similar to the way that I was already playing. So it wasn't as hard as I guess it would be for a lot of other people, um, you know, uh, because um, his, the only thing that, that's really, really hard for me are those like quadruplets that he does with his damn foot, you know. Yeah, of course. And he, he's got amazing sticking and his, yes. you know, just yeah. his power. He's got so much power and yes. you know, he's he's just a monster. And I really, uh, I, I, I wish he was around to show me some of the tricks that he does. You know. Right. What I mean? Right. Wouldn't that be I fun? Think, yeah. I think he would be proud of me. I, I really do. I, and you know, as much as I love Jason, mm -hmm. I just don't think Jason possesses. I don't think Jason possesses the um, the finesse mm -hmm. that his father possesses. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that uh, he doesn't. Um, he's more of a, a hard rock, a heavy metal kind of drummer. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he doesn't have that. He doesn't have enough blues in him. He doesn't have enough. You know, the. I don't know. He just doesn't have enough that that backbeat. Mm -hmm. That's the word I'm looking for. Oh, okay. That's the word I'm looking That's for. The backbeat. He just doesn't have enough backbeat to, to really emulate his father. And like I said, God bless him. I really like Jason, yeah. and he's a, an incredible drummer. Yes. is. And I'm not trying to I'm not trying to talk bad about him at all. You know, I think I think the world of him, and I'm so happy he's going around keeping his dad's name alive. Yeah. But when it comes to playing like his dad, I, I you know. Well, there's only one Bonzo, right? So it's. Uh, it, I won't, I'm certainly not. I'm. I'm certainly not up to his level. You know. I'm. I'm. I'm Lisa. Right. Exactly. What are What are some of your favorite Bonham songs to play, though, Lisa? And what are some of the more challenging ones for you? Ooh, I really like "In My Time of Dying." Mm, yeah. It's yeah. great. Um, I like "Achilles' Last Stand." Yeah. Um, no quarter. Sure. Uh, the one that's really kicking my butt, I still haven't been able to learn it out of all, all the songs in the cat and in the in the in all the catalogs. Yeah. The one song that I just cannot figure out, the crunch. Oh uh, right, yep, that is a tough one. <laughs> I can't figure it out. I don't know what it is. It's a mental block, you know. It's that beginning part or that 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 beat that. I can air drum it. I can air think it. I can I can scat it. I can whatever. But when you set me down behind the kit, I just can't do it. It's a whole different thing. Whole different thing behind the kit, right? Yeah. But um. Those songs that I really enjoy playing, like I said, I really enjoy In My Time of Dying. It's such a, it's such a, you know, like, 
such a great song. I, oh, and I love Since I've Been Loving You. I think those are great songs. Um, yeah. Such a heartfelt song. Um, there's so many of them. I, I like the I like how we take out uh, no quarter in the center. We take we do a we do a long like improv section during no quarter. That's great. Uh, you know, uh, there's there's a lot of them. I really it, it kind of differs, you know, month by month. I think, but. Um, sure. But the, the ones that do stick with me are, are, are in my time and, and, and no quarter. Yeah. Well, it sounds like, obviously, you're still learning and growing and, and honing your craft as well. Lisa, for, for drummers or musicians that are up and coming that might be watching this in the future, what advice would you give them as far as to be able to get where you are or just be able to play music in their lives? Practice, 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 and um, you can't. Uh, you, have, you really have to have passion to do it. You, you, anytime you feel like you're going to give up, that's that's when you gotta just you gotta tell you that's when you that's when you start questioning yourself. Am I am I gonna be able to make it or I gotta keep doing it and I've been homeless I've lived paycheck to paycheck I've you know gone hungry I've whatever it's it's all about how, how you're gonna perceive it and, and I say education is the best thing for you uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna be try and be a drummer and and, and make it your your thing your, your, your career I think the move is to study you know, uh, learn as much as you can about your about it, and, and just really practice and practice and practice, uh, and learn your craft to the best of your ability. You know, don't go at it half-assed. You need to just give it a hundred, a hundred and ten percent. Don't let anybody stand in your way and tell you that you can't do it. You gotta stick up for yourself and do the right, do what you want to do. Oh, and stop, do not, stay away from the drugs, man. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, they don't do anything for you except for keep you down. They right. keep you down, man. Stay away from the drugs and get your education. That is the two most important things to possibly do. Mm -hmm. Well said. Take it from me. Yeah. It's really great. Lisa Harrington Squires of Les Zeppelin, thank you so much for being on Musicians on the Record today. Thank you so much, Dave. You have a wonderful week.